did you notice that the more woke a company is? I'm not even kidding. You know, like, I know a lot of people don't like the word woke. Let's put it like this. The more a company virtue signals about diversity, inclusivity, and equity, like, the more it does that, you give it, like, one or two years, and you notice that the price for the product increases. You notice that a lot of the fans are disappointed. And you also notice that they start with the remakes. Like, this thing with the remakes didn't exist when I was younger. You know, like in order for something to get a remake, it would have to be like, I don't know, like a 20-year-old movie or, or like a very, very old video game or something like that. Like, very rarely did people make remakes. What they would do is, like, they would make a sequel or they would make a prequel, but, like, remakes were very, very rare. And nowadays, it's all over the place. I mean, it's getting to the point, and people are even making the joke, that you're going to have the movie come out in January, and they're going to make a remake of it by December. And it's getting like that. I mean, Assassin's Creed, really? Like, really, it, it, which is the one game that you have an entire human history to write out of. Like, you, you do not have to go into the past and remake it. Um, I, I do think that the reason they're doing this is that writing is probably incredibly hard when you have an army of censors up your ass. Which is why when they remake games, they have to constantly remove stuff and, and make them for the modern audience. I mean, we see this with GTA. It's like, oh, well, we're remaking GTA. Well, we can't have prostitutes because Anita Sarkeesian complained, right? So they remove that. And I'm pretty sure like they're, they're going to do the same with Assassin's Creed. But like again, like no one cares about the remakes. The, the thing with Assassin's Creed, to be honest, is like, the story of Ezio da Auditore was nice, but it's not memorable like Mass Effect. It's not memorable like Warcraft 3. It's, it's not the same level of storytelling that would require for people to get a remake in order to enjoy it. Now, the, the whole thing with Assassin's Creed, it was cool that it would teleport you into a specific time period and you could explore through the game the way that historians view that time era. Like, for those of you who don't know, when Notre Dame caught fire, in order to rebuild it, they actually used the Notre Dame from Assassin's Creed because it was made at such a fidelity that even for a video game, it was enough for the architects to actually look at it and try to recreate it. And that was what made Assassin's Creed cool, right? Like, they had a team of historians that actually looked at a period of time and, and they would try to make sure that everything fits and that everything is historically accurate. I remember like uh, they took out a crossbow from a game because they said while it would actually look cool for Ezio to have a crossbow we wanted to maintain historical accuracy and that was then but once they started with the diversity shit they were like okay so in this Greek pottery we added a representation of a teacher teaching two students. Now, we know that women weren't able to be students in ancient Greeks, but we added this for inclusivity purposes, right? So, like, they're trying to gaslight the public because, again, like, most of the people in the audience, well, at least up until recently, they would assume that they have a team of historians in order to fact-check stuff, but now they're using their team of historians in order to gaslight stuff. In other words, they don't have creative people, man. Like, if you're a respectable historian, you probably don't want to associate yourself with this shit. Right? You don't want your name to be signed up on this work, because then people would say that, well, maybe you misled them or something. You know, when in reality, they weren't even interested in listening. So, like, all their talent, all their creativity is gone. So, what they have to do now is to go back into the past and remake the same shit. And, and the interesting thing is, like, no one is even wondering, but why Assassin's Creed, though? Like, like, is it a requirement? Is it a must that every single year another Assassin's Creed title comes out? Why can't they invent a new game for a change? Why can't they make something else? I mean, you know, a lot of people say, well, they, they have, like, all these titles. It's like, yeah, why can't they make new titles? You don't, you don't even have to make something that's triple A. You can make a double A title. I mean, Blizzard actually did that when they actually had a couple of neurons left to put together. They made Hearthstone. Like, Hearthstone was a very cheap game to make. And it was a very profitable game, right? But, but they took a risk. And it's really upsetting because uh, Ubisoft actually has some of the franchises that I like. Uh, I think they have Heroes of Might and Magic. And all you need to do is to take Heroes of Might and Magic and see what Civilizations or Age of Wonders did and go with that. But, like, they flat out refuse for some reason. They just, You know what? Actually, it's for the better. Because given the people that are working at Ubisoft... I bet if they made another Heroes of Might and Magic uh, game, they, they would completely flop. 
But look at this shit, right? So, oh, and by the way, the Yasuke thing, if you go on Wikipedia, the page is locked. Like, they, they make it sure that no one can tinker with it. And every single reference of Yasuke being a samurai is from Western literature. Like, they don't have a single Japanese text that would confirm this. And if you try to edit that in, you can't because the page is locked. I guess it's Ubisoft with their teams of historians working in real time. So the executive, you know, I take it back. They did make skull and bows, right? So, like, uh, uh, this is what happens when you allow the creatives to work. My bad. I, They embarrass me retroactively, I suppose. I, I didn't know this. Yeah, skull and bones. What a shit show. Holy shit. Uh, Prest O'Brien, as to what personally believed uh, the upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadow might offer to those players who either have stopped playing or never played the series, uh, he says that I think the fact that you are in feudal Japan and you explore such a beautiful world with two complementary yet different characters is a very enticing proposition. Yeah, well, why, why didn't you just like... Uh, never mind, I'm, I'm not even going to ask why couldn't they cast a Japanese player. We know why they couldn't. We know, they can't help themselves. Like, literally, they can't. Because they're liberals. They're some of the most racist people imaginable. And they know they're racist, and they feel bad about being racist. So this is their atonement. No, I, I'm not even kidding. This is how they think. Like, I, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, this is how they think, right? They're thinking like, okay, well, we're racist, but if we make a video game, and we cast a black character in it, people won't think we're racist. It, I, I don't even know what to say. It's bizarre, but it is what it is. You just have to take it for granted. It's like, okay... They're not adding it because gamers want to. They're not adding it because it was a demand. I mean, the CEO of the company was crying in an interview that Elon Musk was mean to him on Twitter because of this game. Like, you can't, you can't make this shit up, you know? But, like, put yourself in his shoes, right? Like, he knows he's racist. He tries to show the world that he isn't. And then Elon Musk makes fun of him. How do you make sense of that? You can't, right? So you just go to an interview and you cry. Uh, continuing to the topic that Assassin's Creed O'Brien then inquired as to whether or not the franchise will continue to simultaneously produce more lean franchise entries alongside the major ones or stick on focusing solely on big budget release. The CEO said the first thing players can be excited about some remakes which allows us to revisit some of the games we've uh, created in the past and modernize them. I want to point out that they couldn't shit an accurate Prince of Persia remake. And they weren't even trying to make it a cool game. Like, when Capcom remade Resident Evil 2, like, that's a fucking remake, okay? Like, that that is a genuine remake of a game. 10 out of 10. I mean, holy shit. Prince of Persia, they weren't even trying to add new mechanics. They weren't even trying to add new graphics. Like, it, it was just, like, I don't know, upscaling the resolution, maybe? And then that's pretty much it, right? And they couldn't even get that right. Even that one fucking got cancelled. All right. I mean, what, what can I say? You know, you're. I, I'm telling you, the moment the studio starts advertising that they're for diversity, inclusivity, and equity, I don't know what they're doing. Like, I, I don't know what the policies are. I don't know the people that they're hiring. But what I do know for sure is that the price of the product goes up, the quality of the product goes down, customers are upset, and on top of that, they start with the remakes. So let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.